the bell icon to turn on notifications. We've made the files the instructor uses in this tutorial available for free. Just click the link below in the video details to get these. Hello everyone and welcome back to this course on Word 2019 Advanced. We're down in section 10 where we're exploring the wonderful world of templates in Word. And in the previous modules we've seen where we can access our templates available from Microsoft, how we can load them up and then save as a template so that we can reuse it later on. And in this module I want to further that idea and create our own custom templates. So previously when we've been selecting a template we've been going to File New, searching for our template and then loading it up into Word. In this module we're going to create our own from scratch. So what I have on the screen at the moment is just an empty blank document. And what I want to create is a template for a user manual. So it might be that I'm writing a guide to Microsoft Word 2019 that not only myself but other members of my team are going to utilize for all the courses that they write as well. So I want to create a template that can be reused over and over again by different people to help maintain the consistency when it comes to the style of the document. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to build a cover page. And what you may or may not notice is that on the home ribbon in the styles group, I have some new styles loaded up. So these ones are different to the styles that I've been using throughout the course. Now, if you do want to change the type of style that you're using, if you jump to the design tab, you'll see this group here that says document formatting. And if you click the drop down, this contains a whole bunch of style sets. And each one of these sets contains different properties, so different fonts for the title, heading 1s, 2s, 3s and 4s, and also for the normal text in the main body of the document. So if you don't like the default styles that you have, you can come in here and select a different style set. So I've selected this one here, which is the shaded style set. And what I've also done is I've modified the colors very slightly. So I wanted mine to be this teal kind of blue color, so I came into this colors drop down and just selected a different color palette. And I also modified the font style to a font that I wanted to use. So don't forget that you have these options just here to further customize your style sets. So with all that said, let's jump back to the home ribbon and let's start to build our cover page. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to center align my cursor. And I'm also going to turn on my formatting so you can see what I'm doing. Now I want my cover page information to be a little bit further down the page, so I'm just going to put in a few returns into there. And what I want to have on this cover page is basically the title of the document, the author, the company name, and also the date. And for this I'm going to utilize document properties and fields. So we've seen before where these are kept, if we jump up to the insert ribbon and go across to the text group and into quick parts, we have our document property area. So the first thing I want to add into here is, and you can see that puts a little placeholder that says title in, which is great for templates because everybody who opens this is going to know what needs to go there. If I hit my enter key, you'll see that it moves my cursor down, but because of that paragraph spacing, I have quite a bit of a gap between my title and where I'm about to type. Now, if you want to get around that, or if you want less spacing, I should say, if you hold down shift and press enter, you'll see you don't get as big of a gap. So now what I want in here is the author name. So once again, I'm going to go to quick parts and down to document property, and I'm going to select author. Now this author field will pick up the author name from the properties of this document. So because I created this document, it's populating my name in there. What I could do is click in here and just delete out my name. And it's just going to leave that placeholder of author, shift and enter again. So now I'm going to add my company name. So once again, we're going to quick parts, document properties and company, shift and enter. And finally, I want to enter the date and time. Now you'll see in this text group, I have an option for date and time. So let's insert it. And I'm going to choose the format that I want the date to be in, which is this one just here. Now I'm going to check this checkbox to update automatically so that every time this document is opened, it's going to be the current date and click on OK. 
And there we go. So I haven't actually hard coded the title, the author and the company in. I just have the fields there, which is perfect for a template. What I might also want to do is apply some formatting to these. So if I right click and go to font, I'm actually going to make this one a lot bigger. So let's make that 20 points. And then I'm going to have the author. Let's have that at 12 points. And we'll do the company. That's going to be 12 points as well. And then the date, I'm going to make that 12 as well, but I'm also going to make it italic and click on OK. And there we go. So now I have my cover page with the information on it that I need. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to enter a table of contents on my second page. So I'm going to create a page break, control, enter. Now I can see that my cursor is center aligned and also still in italics. So I'm going to turn off italics and I'm going to left align. And what I'm going to do is go up to references and I'm going to insert a table of contents like so. Now you'll see this table of contents says no table of contents entries found. And that's because we don't have any heading styles in our document as yet. But it's good to have it there as a placeholder in a template, because if it's already in the template, it just means that once people have put together the document, all they need to do is come back here and update it to pick up those table of contents entries. Now, after a table of contents, we will have a page break. So control enter, which brings us down to the next page. So it might be that in this template, I want to let people know how I want a heading one, a heading two and a heading three to look in this document. So I'm going to select from my styles heading one and I'm just going to call this heading one. I'm going to press enter a couple of times and do a heading two. Enter a couple of times. Heading three and then finally let's add a heading four in there as well. So it's good to have these in your template so that people know that they need to use this one for any main headings, this one for any heading twos, so on and so forth. Now, something else I might want to do in this document is add in headers and footers. Now, I don't want to have anything on my cover page, but I do want to have headers and footers on page three and all of the pages thereafter. So I'm going to double click in my heading area and I'm going to say document info and I'm going to add the document title and I'm going to center this in my header. Now that's all I'm going to have in my header, but I do want to add some things into my footer. So I'm going to use the go to footer button to jump straight down to my footer. And now I'm going to select footer and I'm going to choose blank three columns. And where it says type here, I'm going to replace this with the short version of the date, which is going to update automatically. I'm going to replace this one with the author name. And this one is going to be the page number. Now I need to put the page number in at the current position where I'm clicked. I'm just going to have a plain number and I'm going to click close header footer. So now if I scroll up, let's take a look. So the first page doesn't have anything on it, but the table of contents has picked up the header and the footer. Now the final thing I'm going to add in here is I'm going to do another page break, control enter, and I'm just going to add an index at the bottom. And I'm going to format this the same as the table of contents. And I'm going to add in via the references tab an index. I'm going to say from template, I want to right align those numbers and a dotted tab leader. Click on OK. And of course, it's going to come up with no index entries found because we haven't marked any. But it just means that it's one less step for people who are using this template to do. And there we go. So if I jump into view and multiple pages, we can take a look at what we've got here. And what I also might do is just turn off show hide marks to make that a bit cleaner. So you can see that we have our cover page with our placeholders there and a date that's going to automatically update. We have our table of contents ready to go. It just needs to be updated when we add headings. We have a page that shows the heading styles to be used in the document. And then finally, on the last page, we have an index area. So this would be a really nice template that can be saved off to a share drive and everybody in the team can access it when they're creating a user manual. And it's just going to ensure that everything looks the same and is consistent. Now, let's just jump back to 100 percent 
because I want to show you one more thing related to these document property fields. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click in the title field and I'm going to add a title. Word 2019 user guide. Now that I've typed that in, I'm probably going to want to make that a bit bigger so it stands out a bit more. So let's make that, uh, let's make it 26 font and click on OK. I'm going to click in author and I'm going to add my name and I'm going to add my company name underneath. But the cool thing here is because I use the title document property, now that I've added some text into that, if I scroll down and take a look at my header, you can see it's pulled that through. Because if you remember, in the header, I also use that title document property. So it's now going to flow through all of the document. The same thing with the author. So now that I've added my author to that cover sheet, it's pulling through everywhere I had that document property. So all in all, I think this is looking pretty good. So now that I've got my template, I'm going to save this off. So I'm going to go up to File, down to Save As, and I'm going to click Browse. Now the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to change the Save As type because I want to save this as a Word template. And you'll see that as soon as I do that, the path name where I'm saving this changes. And by default, it's going to save my template into custom office templates. And as we saw before, that's a good idea because it means I can easily access them then from within Word. So this is going to be called Word 2019 User Guide, and I'm just going to call it Template. And click Save. So let's close this down. And now if I wanted to recall that template, if I click on File and go to New, all I need to do is click on the Personal section and you're going to see my Word 2019 User Guide template just there. And one thing you'll notice is that it opens it up as a brand new document. So any changes that I make to this, I'm not overwriting the actual template because it's put it out into a new document ready for me to save. So that is it. Hopefully it's given you some ideas. This was quite a good module because it gets us to practice some of the things that we've learned in the other modules as well. And we've ended up with a really nice user guide template. That's it for this module. I will see you in the next one. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get the files the instructor used in this tutorial and follow along, click over there and click over there to watch more videos on YouTube from Simon Says It.